Hello everyone, welcome to the video for chapter 15 in your book. This is all about IFR and route charts. So I'm going to start out by talking about the L charts. So the L charts are essentially the equivalent of sectional charts that you have in the VFR world. There are several of these that cover the United States. You will have L charts that are bundled together. So you'll have you know, L29 and L30 that might be bundled together, or it's maybe it's L30 and then L31. So these are different in route charts for IFR pilots. Now, a couple of things that are of interest, by the way, they're low altitude. Low altitude means not in class A airspace, so below 18,000 feet. So if you have an aircraft capable of going above that, then you can use the high altitude charts, which are similar, but a little bit different. You know, for one thing, they don't have worry about things like minimum altitudes for any of the routes that are going to be way up there. It doesn't make any sense to worry about hitting anything at 18,000 feet. Okay, so here I'm looking at L30 on Sky Vector. And the first thing to note about these charts is that the scale will vary. It's different from the world that you're used to with VFR charts, where sectional charts have a certain scale and terminal area charts have a certain scale and the WAC charts have a different scale. This will vary and it, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you're not navigating visually. You just have a bunch of fixes that are being identified. So for the purposes of flying IFR, this will vary from one chart to another. And if you look at the chart, it will tell you what the scale is for that particular chart. So here I selected en route L30. I could have just said world low and I'd get the same information, but here's the difference. I can actually scroll over to the sides and I can read what it says on this chart. And that's where I can get things like what is the scale for this chart. Now, of course, that scale is somewhat irrelevant in the case of this online chart that I'm looking at now. Get back to where I was. Okay, so let's start with the very basics. You will see airports on this chart that are either in green, blue, or brown. So here's Bloomsburg. It's right under Victor 232. And it's shown in green. Danville is also shown in green. So is North Oberlin County. If I look at Williamsport, also green. Now, it used to be that there were green and blues and there was a difference between them. They're phasing that out to where eventually there will just be green and then brown. And the blue ones were ones that had military approaches but now they just show those up in green as well so here we have Fort Indian Town Gap and that's not in blue that's shown in lovely green All right, and here's the deck airport that we saw in a previous video. I'm actually gonna switch this to world low 
and you'll see why here in just a second. Here's the Lancaster Airport. And notice this is shown in green. And I'm trying to find a brown airport. Here we go. There's a private field. It's brown. Apparently there's a TFR down this way at the moment. What I don't see on this chart is Smokedown Airport, which if it was on the chart, it would also be brown. So the brown ones do not have an instrument approach. So the way to remember that is those ones are crappy. They don't have any approaches or anything like that. Also, you will see different nav aids. So I'm going to see all my VORs. Sealance Grove, Danville. So there's a Vortac, VOR DME. And I'm sure somewhere on here I can find just a straight up VOR. And what else will I find? I will find Victor Airways. So here's a Victor Airway that passes right over Bloomsburg, Victor 232. This is on a radial of 108 off of this VOR. You might say, why does that 108 sound familiar? Well, if you've flown the VOR approach into Bloomsburg, that might be why. So here we have a T route. And that is on a radial of 076. Sometimes you'll see combined Victor Airways and T routes, like so. Okay, so airports, VORs, what else are you going to see on this? Well, let's look at this little Victor Airway right here. This Victor Airway is on a radial 108. It's Victor 232. And the distance from there to my next intersection is 37 nautical miles. So you see the 37 here. And then from here to here to Beers is 19 miles. And that's what these numbers are telling me. Here's an intersection some of you might know, Diano. This is a common place you might get cleared to, especially if you're going out toward Wilkesbury. All right, so what else can I say about this Victor Airway that's coming out here? I have a certain altitude I need to fly, and that altitude is 4,000 feet. That's called my MEA, my minimum in route altitude. And that altitude guarantees me a couple of things. It guarantees me that I will have the ability to navigate and I will also not run into anything. Now, if I look at Victor 232, it makes a turn here at Beers and it's still 4,000 feet for the MEA if I fly out this direction. All right, so let's look at Victor 106 and see how this might be a little bit different. Victor 106 is based off the ceiling scroll VOR. 
And notice that it says 3,700. And it says 12 miles. This little segment here. And from the VOR to bless is 23 miles. That's what this 23 with the arrow is telling me. All right, so I have 11 to this intersection. And it's shown in blue. This is basically an RNAV or GPS waypoint. And then I have another 12. 11 plus 12 is 23. So it's 23 to bless. Then I have another 10 miles to go to Diano. You might say, but 10 plus 23 is not 32, it's 33. Remember, they're going to round these. Okay, so here's something to notice. Do you see how there's this little N segment going into Diano? Well, what's going on there? Here's what's going on there. Whenever you see this, instead of having the line just goes right through your fix, that means that your minimum altitude, at least one of them, has changed. So, so far we've only talked about the MEA. So here we have 3,700, and if I continue this way on Victor 106, it goes to 4,000. Here, if I'm coming down 164, it's 4,000 here. It's also 4,000 down here. So you might say, well, what changed? I'm glad you asked. Here's what changed. Notice underneath this, there's a star 3500. That is the minimum obstacle clearance altitude or MOCA. So that's telling me, hey, if you are above this, you won't run into anything. Why is that good? Well, obviously you don't want to run into stuff. And you might say, okay, so why is there a difference? Remember, the MEA gives you obstacle clearance and navigation. So I can receive the VORs that this is based off of with no problems at 4,000. I won't run into anything at 3,500. That's what this is telling me right here. Now occasionally you will get an MAA, math, Maximum Authorized Altitude. Uh, you might say, why would I get something like that? Typically, you'll get that if there's some overlying airspace. Maybe there's an MOA or some restricted airspace or something else, just regular controlled airspace that goes on top of that Victor airway. So you might see a little change there in that case. All right, looking around a little bit more. I look up toward Williamsport. Here's the Williamsport Airport. It's telling me it's Class D. That's part-time. That's what the star tells me. Elevation has a lighted 6,800 foot runway. ASOS is on 125.225. If I look over toward Wilkesbury, I see similar stuff. Now, Rod will go through some things that you might occasionally see. You might see things like a localizer that is used to identify an intersection. So you'll see the little feather, like you, which you would have with an approach plate. So that's something that's also new. Some other things you'll see on these charts will be these little postage stamp looking things. These tell you who is in charge of the airspace around here. New York, their Williamsport facility on 124.9. Up here, 
New York on 123625. And as you fly around the region, you will see different little posted stamps. And that will tell you, okay, who's responsible for this area? And you will see these little blue lines right here. So here's the border between New York Center and Cleveland Center. And that's what that's telling you. All right, going back toward our sort of local area. Other things that you'll see. So here I have Victor 30. And you see this little weird thing here that says 3, 6, and 20? And you might say, well, what is that? That's what we call a crossover point. Now, normally, if there's no indication and you have two VORs, that are separated by, let's say, 50 miles. When you got to 25 miles away from one of them, you would switch to the next one when you're halfway there. But not all VORs have the same power, and there might be terrain and some other things that interfere. So we have these crossover points. So you'll notice when you're 20 miles from Sealands Grove, you should switch over to this VOR over here. And if you're 36 from this VOR, then you should be switching over to Sealands Grove. That's what that's telling you. This number in the box tells you it's 56 miles between those two VORs. So that all makes sense. 36 plus 20 is 56. And then of course we have almost an intersection here. You'll notice that this doesn't quite go through that. So technically that's not part of this intersection. It's just a little bit off to the side. Here we have some restricted airspace. Just like with the VFR charts, I could go off to the side and have a look at that and see what's going on there. These dashed lines says C Washington area chart A1 for detail. So just like the terminal area charts, you'll have the little lines indicating where those are available. Same thing is true here. Allentown's class C. So this blue shading is telling you that. Here are the outer limits of that class C. If I go down toward Philadelphia, Here's the footprint for Philly. So those are the basics of things that you would see in an en route chart. Again, this is good up until you get to 18,000 fleet and then you're in class A and you're starting to get into different flight levels. All right, so that is pretty much chapter 15, all about en route charts. We'll see you in the next video.